Hello, educational explorers, and welcome to an invigorating episode of Friedcast, where we journey beyond the whiteboard. Today, we're delving into the dynamic transitions of teachers who've turned their classroom experiences into innovative career opportunities in ed tech. Join us as we unpack the emotional roller coaster of teaching, their strategic shifts to new educational horizons, and get an exclusive glimpse into our transformative adventures. So buckle up and prepare for an enlightening expedition from Chuck Dust to digital domains, because we're reshaping the future of education one inspiring story at a time. Welcome to another episode of the Fried Cast. We're gonna we're seeing some new faces here. Actually, Jacqueline, you've been a part of this already, haven't you? I sure have. But we do have one new face. It would and be I, me. Oh, it's, I'm looking at you right now. Am I looking at you? <laughs> nope. Am I in the right direction? Well, to no, me, I'm no, in the no, right direction. Your way over there for me. Oh, <laughs> so I'm gonna look this way. I'm just gonna. Yeah, look there you me. go. You, you all need to watch the YouTube video so you can see the craziness that's happening right now. Who do we, who's this new person? And then everybody else will introduce themselves. Sounds great. Oh, me? I got yeah, you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kristen Wood, uh, and I uh, work in sales for Fry Tech currently, but I'm a former educator, as all of us were. So you were in the classroom once? Yes, for seven whole long years. Because that's important information <laughs> for this episode. And who, yes. And if you don't know me, I'm Daryl. I am an experienced designer for Fright Online. And, and I'm, we have another, I'm There you go. I'm also an experienced designer hey. for Fright Online. And I also spent seven years in the classroom. Oh, look, you know what? Right. So did I. I five. As a matter of fact. Lucky sevens? Yeah. Look at it. Jacqueline, how many years? I don't know. I think I might. But you know what? Aren't three sevens good luck? And four, it's like. Okay, I, I like know. that. We'll go with that. I'm pretty sure I'm black blackjack that. rules. So <laughs> I'm just saying, if anybody wants to bring me to Vegas, I'm available. That's true. Um, I'm Jacqueline. Hello, everybody. Also, former educator and current fried online-er. I don't even know what my official title is. Er. I like that. You're, yeah. you're the really er. good all for us. Yes. But to me, you're our like word girl. Yeah. Like, I'll you take that. Are, I do like yeah. the wordsmith. Human -y, yeah. um engagement edit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. you know, all let's the things. At, let's go yeah. to our website. Obviously, I'm very great with words. So yeah, what are you called on our website? Gonna, I think it's engagement, right engagement specialist. Oh, I see that. Absolutely. Is that what, what it is? is? Let's see. <laughs> We don't meet, know the titles meet, we meet have. We just team. work really hard. Well, anyways, this is not, the podcast specialist. is not about the title of what my <laughs> job. Okay. The podcast is about something much more exciting and we're hoping will be uh, helpful. Yeah. we. Um, it was us four on a call that got talking about like leaving the classroom and, and why we left, right? Like I think it was a social media meeting that we were having or something and um, we got off on this huge tangent about not only why we left, but um, what what would have prevented us leaving too, and um, and you know some are horror stories, and then some are just normal progression and career type stories. And so there are so many people that are thinking about this as as spring starts to roll around, and um, and so we thought it'd be kind of valuable to share our perspectives. And then I also um, in my less cranky creative state this morning uh thought <laughs> it would be cool to kind of frame it like a breakup right like a relationship yes. and a breakup and uh like what made us fall in love and then we, you know you get some icks mm -hmm. and, yes. you know, <laughs> and then you finally decide to end it and and the seven year itch oh <laughs> seven year itch seven we, year we had that it was. interesting yeah podcast yeah. title the yeah, seven year itch. itch. There you go. Love Perfect it. thinking. I was trying to think, like, what can I name this podcast? There it is. Yeah. But, Perfect. Um, yeah, and we were also talking about how the skill sets that an educator has and how easily an educator yeah. would be able to transition from what they right. do in the classroom to any other job out there, mm -hmm. career path out there. And uh, we all, you know, we all used our skill sets to transition. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we all stayed in education too. I know that's uh, the, yes. that's the added bonus. Yes. Which was important for me. I really mm -hmm. wanted to stay in the education space because I loved it so much. 
I did too, but also because I felt like I went to school, I have these degrees, I even have a master's degree in administration mm -hmm. for education. I can't just completely walk away from this. Well, that was my initial like, okay, I'm leaving, but I'm still connected to schools. And so. Yeah. Did any of y'all go to school, like college for education? My, nope. My, <laughs> my, my post, uh, my master's degree, yes, but my undergrad, yeah. I went for a business. Uh, so I have a bachelor's of business in marketing. Okay, yeah, so let, let's let. I went to design school. So design very school. far from teaching. <laughs> I have a degree in biology. Lauren, we kind of, oh my gosh. Yours is biology. Mine, yes, mine is. are both behavior analysis and then clinical therapy. So no education at all. So I mean, this is so interesting. I promise we were certified to all of our former students. We were yeah. legally certified. We are. We were. You. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think it's so interesting that we left teaching and we, three of us at least, somewhat still ended up in the place where we started at school because marketing and sales and your design and mm -hmm. you do a lot of designing, Lauren. So, mm -hmm. and same, Jacqueline. That's interesting. Yeah, Daryl, do you use your biology knowledge often <laughs> at Pride? <laughs> you, you know, the, the only time I use my biology, I actually taught seventh grade science, which was mostly life science. Mm -hmm. But even then, I still had to learn like ahead of the students. Like, I forgot all of this. I, I, I never retained any of this yeah. information. But um, that's and, and fried. Do I use any biology? Probably in your lesson I, creating. I, I mean, sure. Or, I guess or, try to figure out, building. you know. My yeah. stress level. Why am I stressed? Because of cortisol and <laughs> Ooh, yeah, doom scrolling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it has nothing to do with quite a lot. It's more like, you know. It's funny, I was like, I didn't I didn't I taught some design to middle schoolers. Like it was like a digital arts course, but then it shifted into computer science, which I know knew nothing about at the time. And so I would just learn a little bit to be able to teach the next class. And then, but before you knew it, I was like actually pretty good at coding <laughs> on my own too and, and built those skills that way. So I learned yeah. more as a teacher than even yeah. in school. Mm -hmm. yeah. What a happy little accident. Mm -hmm. In the words of, of your man, Bob Ross. And, and same with behavior analysis, because I came from a behavior lab and then went to a very small town to teach. But behavior management is classroom management. So it was so easy. It seemed yeah, so yeah. effortless because behavior came naturally to me, the rules of behavior, this, all of that, it came naturally to me. And so I could transfer that very easily. Did I necessarily know um, like all of the elementary standards for things like science? Did I know all of the important social studies dates? Was I maybe having to research what I was gonna be teaching the day before an hour before the lunch, the day of, <laughs> yeah. maybe. But the classroom management, I had that a lot. I bet you, I bet you. Didn't. That's why you created a course for us, Rock the yes. Classroom. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't. Yes, yes, true. And I promise, I got better. Again, again, I got better. <laughs> to all of my former students, I got better. Uh, okay, but I think that it's easier for an educator to get better at understanding and really honing in their subject matter than it is for um to build this whole new set of classroom management skills like mm -hmm. that's what I, I remember talking i forget who i was talking to but they were talking about hiring a computer science teacher and i said hire someone who loves to teach and who understands classroom dynamics and things mm -hmm. like that they can learn along with the students like the content of what we're supposed to be taking away from class today like if they've got the character piece of it all and like the grit peace and the growth mindset and all that. And then the classroom management, the other stuff just comes so naturally. But, but yeah. vice versa, I've seen folks that are really great <clears throat> in the coding space, hate teaching. Mm -hmm. They hate learning that classroom management piece and the, you know, the behavior aspects of it all. Yes. So I think of like the IT guy from yeah. SNL. It's like, yeah. why aren't you listening? I already said, sit in your seat once. I don't care if you're six, like pay attention. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that's hard to translate, but really it was, if you didn't have that piece, the classroom management, then nothing could get taught. Amen. It was, it was hard right. to get them to mm -hmm. care or to be engaged or to sit regardless of what age it was. So yeah, that, that helped tremendously. Um, that transfer of it for sure. And I did not want to be a teacher. I 
mm-hmm. didn't want to do that at all. But then I fell into the position and I was like, mm, I think I might love this. What? Because <laughs> the classroom management was easy and the, it was just, you got to really hang out with cool humans, cool little humans. Yeah. And I loved yes. getting to do that and seeing their little light bulbs go off and they just had the cutest relationships and they would say the funniest things. And yeah, the, the human part of it was always so enjoyable for me. Yeah. What grade was that? What grade did you teach Jacqueline? Um, second, third and fifth. Okay. okay. You did elementary. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did high school for four years, ninth through 12th. So I, because I taught elective classes because I had a business degree. So I did post back certification for teaching mm-hmm. and got certified ninth through 12th for business and technology. So I taught some of those desktop publishing classes and, <laughs> nice. um, yeah. So, um, and then I taught, I did that for four years. And then I went, like I said, I, I was trying to go into administration. So I knew it was important to be uh, exposed to grade levels that were standardized testing and stuff. So I jumped from high school to third grade for three years. And I'm here to say third grade. I love those kids, but I think third grade is what really put pushed me to the edge of <laughs> oh, wow. leaving. A, what a jump. Well, I mean, it's, well, it's, yes, it's a jump. Uh, the grass isn't always greener. It's just a different set of problems. That's for mm-hmm. sure. Um, but it was very. I think more parent involvement in third grade. There, well, in my situation, not so much. It was more so the bureaucracy. The the uh, I was one person, and I had twenty seven kids, and they were all day in the same room, and these five were GT, and these seven were ESL that had possibly been exited a little too early, Mm. you know, it was just, and then I was responsible for teaching whole group, differentiating instruction, pulling RTI, having documentation, going to weekly meetings, showing up for meetings that other people couldn't, what are those called? Not RT, were they RTI meetings? No. ARD meetings. ARD meetings. Like they just needed an educator in there, you know, like, Mm. it's just like, Mm -hmm. when, when do I have time for me and Mm -hmm. my family when I get home? Because anyway, and you have to we, teach all the subjects too. You can't yeah, just be like, yeah. I'm going to do my ELA it's social studies. Perhaps. Yes. And it's yes. funny. Ooh. There's something about third grade yeah. I think, because I couldn't, I had a horrible, I had, did not enjoy my third grade experience teaching. I mean, as a student. And then when I started teaching, I thought the one grade I'm not going to do is third grade. Cause I had subbed a little bit, you know, growing up and through school and I third grade was always the worst for me. I don't know what it was about third well, grade. I but think why, you, why is that? I believe third grade is where elementary goes from kind of like fun to it's time to get serious. Now it's, it's probably a changed a little grade. bit yeah. now. Yes. It's your first grade level to be tested. And that's when, you know, and it's such a big deal here in Texas, the standardized testing. So like mm-hmm. that was a lot of pressure on the kids. They'd been hearing about it since second grade. They'd been hearing about it all year because pressure's on us. We mm-hmm. are unintentionally pressuring them it's all the language in the school so it's a real big shift and what they possibly were kind of getting away with in second grade and just being passed on through no more i mean it's going to show on the test here in third grade so it's just i think that has a lot to do with it Mm -hmm. maybe it maybe is also a time where you start to realize if you are good or bad at something or like if if there are gaps that exist yeah. for yourself as a student and you don't have the skills yet to even be able to say, I don't get this or, you know right. what I mean? Like yeah. maybe that's part of it too. I don't know. And it's so internalized as well. Uh-huh. And so that shows up in behavior and that shows up in how they interact with their yes. peers and their teacher and how they engage with the materials and if they even care at all. And Kristen, you said something that's so true. You said um, something to the extent of they, you can't pass the buck anymore. And not to say that, you know, younger teachers, the younger grade teachers right. did that all the time, but it definitely happened where if you weren't seeing progress with a student, there wasn't necessarily that standardized test of a pass fail to kind of stick to you. You could just say like, all right, well, goodbye. I gave them lots of love. Yes. Yeah. Lots of Would love. Be, you're just so important. <laughs> Which it truly <laughs> is. And they have their own sets of, of yeah. parameters and benchmarks and all of these things. But you're exactly right. In Texas, it starts that standardized test and it becomes a whole, its own personality, basically. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how elementary school teachers do it. 
but it's tough. I, I mean, the middle school had its own challenges, but I like, you know, if we want to talk about what made us fall in love with teaching in the first place, like you said, Jacqueline, like these little cool little people. And I loved the fact that these kids were just not done yet. Like yeah. develop, you know what I mean? Like they yeah. just didn't have all of their puzzle pieces in place as far as who they are as a person and what really like makes them tick and energizes them and things like that. And so I loved that. And I loved them trying to, cause in middle school, they try to act like they've got it all together, but they also, <laughs> but they also don't have the ability to pretend to be someone else. So they are just inherently themselves. And like, I just, it was like the most, it was, it was just so fun to watch them like be vulnerable and try so hard not to be. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, yeah, it was just, I had so much fun like getting to know these kids. I also had the benefit of teaching them sixth, seventh and eighth grade. So I really, oh, so you got to carry them through. Them. Yeah. That's wow. I, had that. I, taught, I taught them every year. And so like mm -hmm. it was so every year I taught the whole school. And so I got to see them kind of grow and, yeah. and develop. And I stuff. was lucky enough to have that scenario as well. So I think I didn't fall in love with teaching initially. I fell in love with the idea of falling in love with teaching because uh, in my like junior and senior year, I had a, a, a teacher that was super impactful for mm -hmm. my, on my life. Uh, thank you, Ms. Talbot, if you ever hear this. Oh, this is um, yeah, I've actually called her and thanked her when I became a teacher because I understood how important it was. But I would, I would say if not for her, I probably would not have gone to college. I would not have known there are opportunities for me in the situation I came from. So anyway, because of her, I was like, you know, I didn't know I was going to be a teacher and I ended up, you know, getting married and having kids. And that was kind of a path that was going to fit my life best. And then I thought, oh, and I can be Miss Talbot. I can be Miss Talbot for kids. What a great thing. So that was my goal. And that's what I did. And I taught ninth through 12th. And she was my business teacher, my business technology teacher, but I worked half a day. So she was also like the work teacher. Yeah. And she also ran DECA, which was Distributive Education Clubs of America. But it was my first time to do something competitive that wasn't athletic that allowed me to like tap into some speaking skills and business ideas. And anyway, so it was just a really great learning experience. So I thought I'm going to do this. So I went, I taught high school nine through 12th. I started a DECA chapter. I started a school store. I mean, I basically modeled exactly what she was doing. And I was like, I'm doing it. And I called her no. and I actually started a DECA chapter our second year. I got to take two girls who had never even been on an airplane. We got to go to Atlanta, Georgia. They competed for international champions. Uh, I mean, they didn't go all that far, but they didn't, they, we went to the international competition, which means we went past state. So it was just such a big deal. And then that year of graduation, one of those girls got up and got to speak and thank a teacher and she thanked me. Oh. And I thought, oh, see, full circle. Yeah. I love teaching. And then I went to third grade. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's where so right. I have to say, it's funny, like, I'm not, I think obviously life led me where I was supposed to be and mm -hmm. there's probably more to go. But part of me wonders if I would not have stopped, if I would, have, if I would not have moved to third grade, would I still be that high school teacher? I don't know. I don't know. But that's that's what made me fall in love with it and want to be there was knowing that regardless of the curriculum, that I was impacting these students on a human level uh -huh. where they felt inspired, where they where they could see just because my dad's in prison and I'm living with my grandma doesn't mean I can't go to college too. Uh -huh. look at Miss Wood, you know, so. So, yeah, that that yeah. part, that part, if that was the only part, I would still teach, you know. Right. But unfortunately, <laughs> the uh, yeah. the other really outweighs it a lot. Yeah. Daryl, what um, what made you jump into teaching or or fall in love with it, I guess? Yeah. Well, so it's my fifth year of college. I didn't know what I needed to do, what to do. <laughs> I was like, I need a job right away. But so I volunteered. <laughs> a friend of mine was like, hey, you should you know check this organization out and i think it was called project s-e-e-e -E -E, like science enrichment and elementary education so what i did was i traveled different element elementary schools and i did like 
Bill Nye the Science Guy type of stuff. Oh, go there fun. and blow things up. Oh, I can up. see that. I bet you can see that. Bet you right so eyes, so like, this is so oh. fun. They love me. They love it. And I don't have to deal with classroom management. I just did everything, you know? I blow things up. So like, come back. Come back show. again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I love this. I want to be a teacher. So um, I, I took an alternative certification program and I, I taught my first year teaching. Uh, my first day in the classroom was actually my first day in the classroom. I did I didn't student teach. My oh, wow. my program we, I went through a you know like a four week a month uh, you know face to face with other educators and they taught us and then I put in I tutored a little bit too and I did Project SCE so that became part of my my hours to you know to meet those requirements. But actually being in the classroom and handling it myself, creating a syllabus and rules and all that. That day was my first day there, and that was a tough year. Yeah. <laughs> that was a yeah. tough year. It was eighth graders, and I think at that point, I was like maybe – I was 23, mm. and some of those kids were like – it was it was an enrichment class, so some of those kids were like 16. Oh, wow. So we were very close in age. Yeah. And, you know, the biggest mistake I told them, hey, y'all, this is my first year <gasps> teaching. <laughs> Oh no! I know they told me never to say that. Like, hey, this is gonna be a great year. It's gonna be so fun, and um, I learned. I learned. It's like, because I remembered being in the class, being a student, what it was like in college. Just like sit and get, sit and get. Even in high school, sit and get, sit and get. So Mm -hmm. that was my mentality. I'm just gonna lecture these kids like every single day, and and I had, and I was the only person who taught that specific class, so I didn't have anybody to kind of lean on and everything. But it was tough. It was tough. But um, by my second year, I was like, I know my, I, just, I know so much more. I know what it should look like and should be. The second year was even tougher because, like, I, I knew what it had to be, and I couldn't meet those standards. And and I thought, like, a classroom had to be, like, quiet and in rows. Right. And, you know, and they listen to everything that you say because I had another teacher who taught a different subject, and that's how their classroom was. And she was my mentor in a way. And it's like, so my classroom has to be like yours. So let me try to make it. And it wasn't my personality, you know? Right, right. So I was like going in the bathroom and just crying in the oh. bathroom. Yes, men cry. Oh, I, the bathroom. I remember, I remember, Real I remember men cry. That's right. I didn't, I didn't lock the bathroom. So the assistant principal went in the bathroom. She saw me crying. I'm sorry. I meant to lock the door, but you see me like this. Oh, like, What's going no, on? It's just been Sarah. a tough. It's just been tough. It's just been tough. And I, you know, I, I have such high standards and I want to make sure these kids are learning, but they don't want to learn. And what am I doing wrong? Right. Uh, so that, that person helped me out, uh, that assistant principal. And so she was checking on me, you know, every oh. day, making sure I was doing okay. Um, so then it got better. It got better. They actually moved me into a, a science classroom. I did science enrichment. So these are the kids who took two science classes each mm. day because their star score was too low in science. Ooh. So like they hated science to begin with. Yeah. Like, science? Right. Come on. Mm. Uh, but and then they, they, know, and they know that they're in an uh, additional class because they're lacking skills. And then therefore, therefore, it's right. Even worse. Mm. Even worse. You know? So, right. so I try to make the best of it, you know, but, um, so I moved to an actual science classroom, then it got better, and then I moved here to Houston. So I did four years of seventh grade when I moved here to Houston. I taught an humble ISD, and I think seventh grade is what, like, I really connected with those kids because they're super quirky. Because eighth graders, mm-hmm. I was a little bit intimidated because they think, you know, I don't know, I think I'm about to yeah, go to high school, whatever. But seventh grade, mm-hmm. they're goofy, they're able to joke, they understood yeah. my jokes, and we, we got along, and and I took project-based learning. I took a PD on PBL, like my fourth year teaching. I was like, I love PBL. This is amazing. All the kids are doing all the work, and I'm just like facilitating <laughs> learning. And I spent a lot of t- a lot of time you know, in the back end preparing these lessons, but it was worth it because mm-hmm. my classroom management wasn't the best. And I wasn't like, you know, I, I let things go. They were able to eat in the classroom and listen to their music or whatnot, but as long as I knew they were learning. But and I loved it. I, you know, pr- project based learning was huge. And then ed tech, I had I had iPads in my classroom, like a set of dedicated 30 iPads in my classroom. So nice. I was able to use those. Yeah, nice. I fell in love with that and Google Classroom just came out. And from mm-hmm. there, I transitioned to digital learning. I wasn't ready to leave the classroom because that year, like my, my, seven, my sixth year, I got like teacher of the year and they gave me oh. a STEM, they gave me a STEM class. Oh yeah, STEM. And then um, I was doing professional development for my district because I love to present like on ed techs related mm-hmm. stuff. And then, the district caught, I caught their attention. I was like, hey, would you be interested in 
you know, digital learning. It's like, wow. Mm, mm, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm not ready to leave the classroom, but teaching adults and, and, you know, and, and I'm passionate about digital learning. Let's do it. Let's give it a go. So yeah. awesome. that's what happened. Yeah. But that's that, a great example. I think I felt like I went on forever just talking it's, randomly. I don't even remember no, what the question it was, was. It was great. And one thing <laughs> that I thought of while you were talking <clears throat> too was the assistant principal that really made those first mm -hmm. couple of years a lot better. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and I, yeah, I, and I had a mentor teacher too. So, yeah, yeah. That I would say the school that I was at had wonderful like coaching systems and mentor systems and things like that. And so, like, I, I knew I could learn from. <clears throat> so many different people in the building, but I do remember my first year. Cause like, cause these middle schoolers, yeah. As soon as they know it's your first year doing anything, yeah. they tear you apart. <laughs> right? And so like I was having a tough time, especially with eighth grade uh, kids. And so um, my coach, I remember I had, it was like the first project that they had turned in and like, it just didn't go great. No one's looked, or worked very well or like anything like that. Like it was just, I wasn't proud of it as a teacher, but he goes, wait, all of them turned something in. And I was like, yeah. And he That's goes, all of them turned in a project <laughs> in. And I was like, yeah. And <laughs> we both got up and he was like, let's do a victory lap. And there was like this common space that all of our little like pointing me. Aww. And he was like, let's run a victory lap. And so we had oh, just me and him alone in the room. Man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> awesome. But like, actually, it was, it was so wonderful as a new teacher because I was yeah. like, oh, that's my bar. Okay. Like, then yeah. I can do that yeah. and I can build on that and I mm -hmm. can get better. And like, that actually was so, so valuable for me. Like, feeling yeah, like I, I didn't need a victory lap, too. Yeah, I'm glad I mean, you said that because something stuck out with me because, like, my, my kids were like standing up <clears throat> different tables and, and they were just all over the place. But then my mentor teacher's like, look, they're all over the place, but are they learning? Mm -hmm. so, you're right. They are learning. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's those teachers, <laughs> those, those mentor teachers that really do. Yeah. Daryl, yeah. when you said, oh, yeah, my classroom management wasn't that good. You know, I'd let them eat. I'd let them listen to music. I was thinking, I'm like, that, that has nothing to do with classroom management. Right. In fact, that, it, that would help at times letting yeah. them, because you can't learn if you are hungry. And, and sometimes mm -hmm. you need, music to you know to kind of facilitate things and so that is meeting students where they're at and that is a huge part of classroom management so you yeah that's there you go i had classroom management right yeah. yeah and also with it there's such a common thread in all of our stories is just feeling like we're not alone when we're in the trenches because mm -hmm. whether it's crying in the bathroom which there we've also we've all had that <laughs> moment we've all oh. had that moment in education uh, where we are ugly yes. weeping fetal position in the corner like yeah. we've definitely all been there um and i nailed it every day yeah so, <laughs> right i mean obviously i'm sorry that happened to you guys <laughs> yeah i mean i can't relate but well, she can't relate yeah can't relate. <laughs> um but having somebody that's like hey i got you or or even just i don't i can't relate but you're not alone in that that makes such a big difference and whenever um kristen you were saying something earlier about how um, you had that teacher that was just like, it's possible. Just even knowing yes. that like someone else thinks it's possible too. And I'm not alone in that also that that makes a big deal. And the bureaucracy and the, you know, we've talked about kind of breaking up with education and what, what led us out of that. And that was, de that's a factor that is taken into consideration for a lot of teachers leaving the classroom is the, I guess, I don't want to say politics of it, but, um, the interactions that aren't necessarily student related. It's not the students, it's other stuff. And mm -hmm. um, there were times where I would try these crazy things in the classroom. And I got lucky that I had an amazing principal, um, Jenny Morris, love you so much. And I talk about her often anytime I like present because she really was like, I trust you and I got your back. And it doesn't matter if other people maybe don't see the vision, go for it. And knowing that she kind of, supported me in that way, made me so confident and made me feel more comfortable doing things that maybe didn't look as conventional, um, like having my students design their own classroom or, or whenever PPL first came out and stuff. I'm telling you, we taught in like the wild, wild west of ed tech <laughs> and did, anything yeah. went like, we're like new tool, bring it in. Let's try this. Sure. Let's see how we can use this. But having somebody that's like, you're not alone in this. I got you. 
go forth and be awesome. That made such a big difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And can probably <laughs> prevent a lot of teachers wanting to leave the classroom. Cause I do think, I think for all of us on this particular, like in this particular conversation right now, like, I don't know that any of us thought teaching would be our last stop. Like, I don't know that any of us picture this as being like, you know, this is what I will retire doing or anything right. like that. But I do think that there's a lot of people who would totally be a teacher for their whole. And I know uh, my yeah. like colleagues who mm -hmm. like, I know they will never leave because they love teaching. Um, and so like, when we think about, schools and and retaining teachers and things like that like it just sounds like the the relationship that leadership has with teachers is so so important mm -hmm. teachers feeling so a sense important. of autonomy is so mm -hmm. important too and like for me i <clears throat> i didn't leave because i was just fed up with the school or anything like that I'm somewhat like daryl an opportunity came up for me to have a little bit more of a like a flexible working style and i knew you know, if my husband and I wanted to start a family, that that actually was really important to me and my career and things like that. But, um, but like, I loved, I loved my school and I loved the district that I was in. And, um, and I felt like there was nothing that I couldn't go directly to the principal's office and say, I don't like this. And here's how I think it should be different. And she would look at me and say, great, what, like, let's, let's do it. And like, you, you can help lead it and mm -hmm, you can build mm -hmm. it to whatever you want it to be. And like, I wasn't the only one that felt that way at our school. Like it was very much led by people who are like, I don't like this, let's change it. And then a bunch of people that are behind them, like, yes, you go kind of like you, Jacqueline of like, we trust you. We trust your vision. Let's go for it. I feel like that's well, so y'all were very fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> That was not my experience. had a different experience, I think. Yeah, yeah, and I actually was thinking about this before we gathered. And, you know, I think that my immediate, for the question, like, why did I leave te teaching? I've been asked this several times. And I think my initial response wants to be the event that was the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, the, 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 uh, the catalyst, catalyst event. Mm -hmm. Uh, is what my normal answer is. But of course, I, you know, I really started thinking about that. Had that event happened, if I was in a better mental, emotional space, if I wasn't exhausted and burnt out, if I had felt supported initially by administration, if I would have had mentors and all of the things you just said that you had, if I would have had that, would that one event been a been the catalyst for me leaving? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Would I have eventually left if I were still in that state of constant frustration and just like, what am I doing? You know, I'll, this is, that was, there was an event that was a catalyst thing. I'm not going to get into the details unless y'all really want me to, but <laughs> I will say, I, you know, another, I guess, event or or marker that made me leave was, you know, I went to my doctor because I didn't understand my emotions. I'm like, why am I crying all the time? Why am I this? Like, I don't know. And he, his prescription to me was to put me on an antidepressant and then followed up with, don't worry. I mean, there are so many teachers taking this. It's kind of normal. Mm -hmm. And that's when I said, mm, you know what, mm -hmm. I, if I have to take a medication to to be in this job, then maybe I need to get another job. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I think it was all of that, but, but the, the big reason was I just, it was too many years of feeling not, a pre, you know, underappreciated, overworked, underpaid, not heard. And then having mm -hmm. that realization that I can see places where changes need to be made. And if made, we could turn this thing around, but I'm not heard. I'm disregarded. In fact, Mm -hmm. Even though I have these degrees, when authority is speaking to me, I am a minion who is not to speak until, you know, told to be mm -hmm. to speak. So I just, yeah, I, I'm a person of as long as you respect me and, and yeah, I'll work hard for you. But I just that that was a lot of why I left. And then also realizing that um, at the time, 
um, someone I knew that was in sales was making, working probably 50% of the hours I was working and making three times the money I was making as a teacher. Yeah. Um, that was like a, a light bulb moment of wait mm -hmm. a second here. And then just uh, things fell into place. It was springtime, you know, testing time, mm -hmm. teachers are stressed mm -hmm. out. And then uh, I had a, someone come to me with an opportunity for educational sales. Uh, and I jumped and I've been there ever since. So mm -hmm. it worked out in, in that way, but that's, that's why I left. I just, it was just too much. It was taking mm -hmm. a toll on me and on my family. Cause at the time my children were little and I felt when I got home, I, I had no patience for my right. own children. Mm -hmm. I had no energy to be present with them and play a game on the floor because I'd been mm -hmm. doing this all day. You know, it was just yeah, it was really affecting my life. And I remember I being like in the classroom and and giving your all emotionally to these kids and being so oh hang on, I froze. And being so present. And then I remember leaving thinking, because I did not have children at the time, thinking like, how do parents do this? How do people <laughs> I know. have kids mm -hmm. that aren't their students? Because I thought the same. Like zapped, completely zapped. How are you? Mm -hmm. I, so that makes that makes total sense, Kristen, when you say that. Yeah, I was also awesome. staying up till, uh, like I was working as soon as I got home, usually till about 10 o'clock yeah. every night. And I thought there is no space for anyone to enter my family at this point. Like there is, right. there is, I, there is no space. And like, every, you know, anyone who's not a teacher would make the argument like, but you get breaks, you get the summers off and things yeah. like that. And yeah, that's, yeah. Actually, mm -mm. that's the biggest joke I've ever yep. heard. <laughs> yes. So, you can you're not at three. Time, if you're not in trainings galore during the summer, then you're also spending that time trying to get ahead and create what you need to create and get everything set up and get everything ready. And it's like, it always helps like a little but it never seems to do all the work for you. And, you know, so, and yeah. it also just, it speaks to such a, I could soapbox on this and I'm going to really try hard not to, but <laughs> is just a, a national, the national approach to teachers mm -hmm. is one of veiled disrespect. Like mm -hmm. they're so, Oh, teachers, we love you. Love those teachers. Y'all are heroes. Yeah. Okay. Well, how are you supporting us then? What are you right. doing with funding? What are you doing with, you know, coming to truly appreciating what's happening because teachers are so impactful on students. They spend at times more time with your own children than you do. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're so impactful, but that respect is just, it's, I don't know. It's not there. It's just not there at times. And they deserve so much more for. I have a great example that would build on what you're saying. So when I was, I was a cheerleading coach at this school here, we moved from Denver up to Fort Collins during the pandemic. And I really wanted to be in a school setting and around kids again. Um, and so I started coaching cheerleading and I was taught one of my assistant coaches also worked in the building. And so I was up near her um, desk and we were, we, I, we were just kind of like grabbing some things before we went to practice. Anyways, one of the seventh grade math teachers was in the same room and she was like visibly, like not upset, like, but like heated, like boiling, heated. And it was because, and she, she started telling everyone about it. She's like, I just got an email from a parent who regraded their child's math project according to my rubric and feels that they deserved a different grade <laughs> based on their understanding of the rubric versus my understanding of the rubric. <laughs> and I, I was what like, cause what I taught in like a, a totally different environment. We were urban middle of Denver. We had a difficult time getting parents to be involved. Right. Much less, they weren't grading projects. Right. <laughs> I, my job, like I could, I was like picking it up off the floor. Like I cannot believe. And then how do you not write an email back? That's just like the rudest thing. You, right. you know what I mean? Like, how do you yeah, not just do. like, wow. Just, like, I, to that, I would say, it seems like you have so much extra time. Would you like Here. to be? Here's yourself? more. Would you like to have? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Here, grade them all. Please grade yeah. them all. <laughs> yeah. Please come in and sub. My God, that would, that would help. So, so what did you right? do? How did you respond to that? It wasn't me. It was just another, it was, oh, another, it was another teacher. teacher. Oh, okay. And also yeah. like Lauren Daryl, 
we are, we're going to talk a big game right now about this, but our children are not in school yet. No, <laughs> that's a, y'all like, aren't. I've I got. Know. Yes, I've got so, one in college and one a junior in high school right now. Okay, so then, Kristen, how does that impact how you communicate with teachers? <laughs> with teachers, yes. Have you had a teach? Oh, I don't know if we. Oh, I'm to very ask you respectful this, but... to teachers. Also, I'm very understanding, but also I have to say, like, I'm going to brag on my kids. I've just never had to oh, have those type so, of teacher emails. So lucky. I have Ever. heard wonderful things. The emails you. that I get no, are, I, I are oh my God, I love your no. kids. They're so amazing. Oh. <laughs> so I've been very, very lucky and fortunate. I've not had to do nasty emails. Um, but anytime I communicate with a, I will say actually once my son's senior year, I had gotten an email that an assignment wasn't turned in, which took me aback because that's not my son, but also senior year, senior, senioritis. Yeah. So yeah. I had talked to him about it. He admitted it. And so then I went back to her and completely backed her up, apologized for his behavior and that it was out of character. And I completely understood if she wanted to give him that zero, but that I would appreciate having the opportunity for him to put it in, but if not totally support her. And she was loved him so much and knew that that was out of character and figured he was just in a, you know, having a senioritis day or whatever. And she allowed him to do it. But as an ex teacher to you guys, I, I can say this, your first instinct, you want to, that's my kid. Mm -hmm. My kid would yeah. never. Yeah. And I've thought that about my kids though. They would never, but, <laughs> but you know, always get both sides of the story. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Cause I, I listen, I don't want to doubt my child, but she also is showing signs of maybe not being like the most, um, compliant student. <laughs> it might just be you. Or, or... Well, kids, you haven't met my, my kid, husband. Your my kids husband had completely a... different in a, in a, like I've had teachers tell me, that my kid is a certain way. And I'm like, who are you talking about? I feel I like know. kids are completely so, different with teachers. Yes. Yeah. It's like they have yeah. their own. It's just weird that they're like, I oh, they did that this problem. today. I would love for her to be insane in my household and then <laughs> cause no problems at school. Like, I would love that. Okay. Okay. I, I'll take it. I don't care. But, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's hard from the, like, we're our own, like, we can be our own problem sometimes. Yeah. Too, but, you know. <laughs> okay, what what else we at here? Um, we talked about some icks, uh, basically not being supported. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of a parent ick there. I'm trying to think of what I really didn't like about teaching, like what I was happy to say goodbye to. Um, oh, I definitely when I read this, I'm looking at these questions and stuff. One of my biggest icks was the mindset of we've always done it this way no. and it does not have to be that way mm -hmm. and things were inefficient i can't stand when they're just not efficient like that it's like guys it, it doesn't have to be like this and being met with yeah but that's how it's always been done we've always used this we've always done gone here for this it's just mm -hmm. it it drove me crazy it right. felt like an actual ceiling that i could not break out of Right. Um, that was a huge it for me. Yeah. Uh, lunch duty was a huge it for me. <laughs> oh, I hated that. <laughs> and lunch the bus duty, duty same. So. Yeah, all of it. Car oh, rider. Yeah. Car rider. Oh, oh that's Just elementary. Duties in general. When I, yes. at my school, we had like, it was like insane rules. And they, like, if they forgot a pencil that day, they had to stay after school for 45 minutes and like reflect on responsibility oh, and things like that. And then we had the most hilarious thing. The name for detentions was called refocus, which is uh, like <laughs> wow. so funny to me. No, it's so um, funny. Like, yeah, what a rebrand, right? Um, so they had to refocus about like whatever they got a detention for and stuff like that. And so there was there was tons of reasons for them to get a refocus or the other one was called college prep to like, so if like they weren't prepared for school that day or something. And like all of us had to run those and like, School yeah. ended at four. Those were 45 minutes long. Didn't start till 4.15. So it's five o'clock before you're even done with anything. And then you still have everything to do. Yeah. And our day started at 7.45. So there was not 
morning time either. Mm -hmm. So any duty, any duty that took up extra time for me felt so that we, that we were not getting stipend for. No, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, yeah, no. Uh, so uh, the last question that I saw that I am curious to know about y'all, because I know my answer, but <laughs> would any of y'all consider going back to the classroom? <sighs> Daryl, would you go back? Ooh, look at that. You know, sometimes <laughs> there are moments like when there's a new tool that we teach or we showcase something here at Fried Tech. It's like, oh, I would love to try this out in a classroom and it would be amazing. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, um, but then I'm like, maybe if I just did that one lesson <laughs> and then just jet it out. That's all kind of like you used to do with the science thing. It's, it's all, it's all, yeah, right. Right. It's all I need. And leave. But, yeah, there's all this other, you know, baggage when it comes to, yeah. to teaching. But I mean, would I ever go back? You know, if they, if they, I do miss my TRS, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> 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 Since I'm not going into that. But if, if maybe if they paid us more. Yeah. Maybe. I was going to say, yeah. at this point, it's not financially responsible no, not. for me it to not. go back. Right. Yeah. So, but, and I think my answer is similar to yours, Daryl. I wouldn't mind like popping into a class, maybe just <laughs> a few, a handful of times a semester yeah. just to get my fill and then being like, okay, bye. Yes. <laughs> Have fun with the grades and the homework. And yeah. The, right. yeah. And grading was my ick. Oh, I hate it. Oh grading. gosh. Yeah. The oh, repetition of it is horrible, but there, there's an aspect of missing the, the kids and the, you know, like, we would have softball tournaments and they were always just like, Oh, you're our favorite. And, and they thought more, right. Things like that. So they, yeah, the fun parts. Yes. Yeah. The cute little, um, cute little weird human parts are yeah. definitely missable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. The funny stories. Like I miss, I miss just like the ridiculous stuff that they say. Like a kid showed up one day. Um, it was like a, where they didn't have to wear their uniform that day or whatever they could wear whatever they want and he showed up in a bacon costume like wow. that kind of stuff yes. i like where you just your head showing and the rest yeah. is just like a piece of bacon Love like it. oh that type of stuff i really <laughs> i really oh miss. you know it's Love amazing it. An another thing that i i do miss now because i haven't been in the classroom for i haven't taught a class in like six years i wasn't so but i wasn't at school like three years ago but anyways i went I, I lived right next to the school that I taught at and going to the store, going to HEB, I'd run into students all the time, mm -hmm. which I used to hate. But then when I left the classroom, like I run into them now. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is great. You remember yeah. me. I don't remember your name. I know. But you I remember know. me. <laughs> but now as years go by, I'm not encountering that as much anymore, which I yeah. kind of do miss because I miss yeah. develop, you know, making those relationships with students and them remembering me or remembering a particular right. lesson that they loved. But I don't I don't see that as much anymore. And, Sometimes well, those are what that's, lets me up in a day and a, a, a bad day, but I think I that is the one thing about my four years in high school that I absolutely love. Facebook was still a thing, and so when I left, my students connected with me. And of course, now it's been many, many years. So they're married and they have kids, mm -hmm. and oh. um, two of them started dating as freshmen and took. And because I had electives, like I, I had a lot of the same students ninth mm -hmm. 11 like all the way through 12. they took every one of my classes so i had them every year they started dating freshman year and now they have two kids and it's just Aww. so cool to watch them and know remember who they were as a freshman in high school and now they're all grown up with careers and kids and <laughs> right just, i love that part that's uh -huh. awesome uh -huh. Yeah, I, I made a rule that we you couldn't add me on social media until after you graduated. Graduated. That's right. <laughs> I want to know. Keep it clean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About what you're doing no prior. Risks. But that yeah. is fun. That is fun to yeah. get to see everybody grow up and, and stuff yeah. like that. I even had a former student. Um, she's now in college and she's majoring in graphic design. And so she called me and was oh. asking me a bunch of questions about that. Oh. And so like that was really really special too because it's it's like the i'm i'm i feel like how your teacher probably felt kristen of like yeah. oh my gosh she wants to do something like mm -hmm. similar to what i did and like i taught her design classes you and you know her. in middle school yeah. and things like that and like that actually was really really cool so yeah. i don't know if they paid a lot more i would go back <laughs> um but i don't know i don't know i, would, I, I don't know that there is a number the time. I don't know that there is a number. 
big enough. Like I, I would go back if I could create the all the conditions I wanted. Okay, yes, I'll go back <laughs> under the yes. following condition. I get paid X amount of dollars. I have yeah. complete autonomy. You trust what I'm doing. I don't yeah. have to. Yeah, and I can I, go to the bathroom yeah. whenever I want to. Right. Oh right. yes, and I don't yeah. see why that's a problem. I mean, <laughs> I think that sounds very reasonable. Don't you? Yes. Yeah. Just not. Reasonable. I think someone should come up with a company of like former teachers who just want to be back in the school for a minute and then we just go sub for a day and teach like a like a kick-ass rotating ass teachers yeah kind of like travel nurses but travel teachers and we yeah, travel in nurses. for a they day go to the lesson subs. Yeah, come on. go on to the next one this is a good yeah. idea lauren i think so too or like retire retirees who like did yeah. something really cool like you know, worked for, you know, some kind of engineering or whatever. And like, yeah. they have something cool that like, you know, I think that could be cool. Anyway, if someone Daryl. has time and some cash <laughs> and wants to start this thing, give me start a call. <laughs> Daryl, you have to share that statistic one more time. Which statistic? How many new teachers are going to be needed by 2030? Is that what you said? It's actually 44 million. I said 54, Ooh. but the stats new. is 44 new, new teachers, teachers by 2030. Million. So Lauren, what I'm saying is your idea could be a business where schools, instead of hiring a full-time salary teacher, pay for y'all to just come and like, you yeah. know, fill in and do your thing aligned with their curriculum standards. I am. I don't. I don't see how this could be a bad idea. Me either. Me either. <laughs> teachers are like, "Yes, do it for us." I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, then you, and then teachers could maybe even take the vacation days that they never do, or Amen. you know, a personal day, yeah. or go to the doctor. Heaven yeah. forbid, because that was hey, always but, the hardest part. I do have to say, these teachers coming in now to all of you. If you're not utilizing AI to make your life easier, I am telling you, if I would have had AI in my classroom, like all the things I'm seeing now and mm -hmm. you know things we're learning at Fried, I'm like, I would have had a whole different experience, I feel mm -hmm. like. You know, I would have saved so much time. So uh -huh. teaching is a great thing. We need teachers. We want people to go teach. We just don't want them to burn out. So utilize those AI tools. <laughs> I, I think anyone who's still in the classroom post COVID really, really wants to be a teacher. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I think they're, they're still in it. Yeah. 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 Or they, they're, or they still have they're still in it. You've, you've seen the worst of it. And you yeah, are still exactly. In it. I think, well, I really believe that. And then I, I also think too, like anyone who's going to school to be a teacher um, also really, really wants to, to do this too. Cause then does that mean, what, that they were like a junior, senior in high school and they were doing all the like online learning, e-learning, yeah. yep. COVID stuff too. And so, um, so yeah, so I have high hopes that the people are there for the right reasons, but yeah. I think that schools can build environments mm -hmm. to, to keep them to keep and to them. keep these people energized and feeling creative and feeling like it's their world that they're running and they're not just like a cog in somebody else's right. machine. Well, you know how administration or, or any professional development encourages teachers to create a culture in their classroom where students feel loved and heard in their space and all the things. Why aren't schools and administrators okay. doing that same thing and having that same mindset for mm -hmm. their teachers? Because that's what should be happening. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would change everything. Mm -hmm. And that's not what, like, you want me to do this in my classroom, but why don't you model that for us in this school? Because that would be mm -hmm. great. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm on everything. the opposite. I come from a school that did that. And I, like, I never felt like someone would tell me no, ever. That's beautiful. Girl. Unless it was, like, truly yeah. unsafe. For you were blessed. That was yeah, blessed. That, that was yeah. very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it, it's possible because I was in it. <laughs> It's all about the leadership, man. It's all it really about is. the type of leader that you have in that position. So all of you teachers who are thinking about going into administration, remember this conversation when you're mm -hmm. running a school and you are over educators, all they are are grown up students. Think mm -hmm. about it when you have a professional development day and half of your teachers are on their phones. It's just like the classroom. They're just <laughs> grown up. So the same thing applies, you know, yeah. treat everybody mm -hmm. with love and kindness and compassion anyway that's all yeah yeah on that note I, yeah. Our shameless plug. yeah 
we've got a, a wonderful AI um, offerings if you want to learn and like this <laughs> we do. Huh? We have great leadership courses, which yes. also um, directly address staff led professional development. So jump up on it. Yeah. Jump up on it. Plug. On it. Fried.tech. Hey, hey, little, little jingle. Mm. 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 Oh, or we could do a cheer. Yeah. Lauren, I used to be cheer the first one. I E D. Right. Dot tech. Were you a cheerleading coach too, Kristen? I was also. Uh, no, oh, wow. actually, I was a cheerleader, but then when I, y'all, my at Caney Creek High School, shout out where I taught high school, um, I was the class sponsor, the DECA sponsor, the school store sponsor, the step team sponsor because they already had a cheerleading coach who'd been doing it for years that of course that's where i would have gone but there was this group of girls who wanted to do step routines in the uh -huh. pep rally and the principal said well you've got to have a teacher that's willing to be your you know advisor and so they came to me and i was like sure so Heck yeah i knew nothing about step but these girls would have routines they'd watch on on youtube and they you know anyway yeah and we performed it Pep rallies. It was awesome. I love I that. We that year. Step it, too, and it was so fun to watch always. Yeah. It's yeah. so fun. It is. It's like a proud mama moment, even though they're not your kids, they're your kids. Yeah. You know, you see them out there and they're doing it and everybody's I cheering and they, and they execute it after you know yeah. all the practice they put in. So yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I love all the cheerleader uh, energy on this podcast today. Yeah. Oh, there is. <laughs> Odd man out. Yeah. Oh, he's a, he's the you're fried you're cheerleader. You're staff of cheerleader. Yeah. <laughs> true. He true. is. Yeah. All right. All right. Educators and administrators, thanks for listening. We hope you have a wonderful day. Peace. Bye. 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 Bye.